Uh, hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris, and today I'm joined by... Carson. And we're going to be watching some TJ Hawkinson tape with you guys. So, uh, you opened... I asked you before we got started uh, if you've seen any of his tape before. You said you've already seen a couple of games. Uh, is there anything that really stood out to you that we should be looking forward to seeing or not looking forward to seeing? Well... What you need to be looking forward to seeing is the run blocking. He's probably the best run blocking tight end I've ever scouted. I haven't been scouting very long, but he's the best one I've ever scouted. And he's just—he's not as good as Noah Fant in the receiving game, but he's he's very good at that too. The run blocking is just fantastic, though. Sweet. Uh, so, do you have any concerns today? Was his combine workout? Do you have any concerns about the athleticism that he showed today, or any of the drills? If you were watching, uh, no, no concerns. Uh, four seven was a good time for him. I wasn't expecting anything fast, super fast like Noah Fant. If you compare him to Noah Fant, he might look unathletic, but he's really not. The uh, three cone for Hawkinson was really good at seven oh one. That's a great time, but uh, Fant was just at six eight one, so it doesn't look as good. But Hawkinson's time was just was just really good. Awesome. Uh, so, he is a third-year sophomore, so you have two years of eligibility at the University of Iowa. Uh, he came in officially at the Combine, of course, at 6'4 and 3 quarters, 251 pounds, 9 and a half inch hands, and 34 and quarter inch arms. Uh, so, any questions about those measurables, or not really? No, fine numbers. Sweet. Uh, so, before we get going, props to Mark Jarvis. This is his database, so just wanted to give a quick shout-out to him as well. Uh, so, the game that you haven't seen yet is Iowa State. So, that's where we shall start. Do you have a preference for full speed or half speed? Uh, I'm fine with full speed, but whatever you want. Ready to get started? Or is there anything else you want to point out before we go? No, I'm good. Sweet. He is number 38. And you can see this, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ooh, not a bad route. Yeah, it was pretty smooth in those routes. And so nice head fades. So one thing that I'm going to point out, too, is all of his snaps so far, of course, we're only 20 seconds in, but all, what, four or five snaps that we've seen from him so far are in line. Uh, mm -hmm. And line sharing manager Bob Quinn actually talked about this, how not a lot of offensive systems line guys up in line. And even Noah Fant here, uh, who's number 87, you'll get to see some of him in this tape. Uh, he lines up in line a little bit, too. So is that something that... Could I mean I don't know how much for you in particular, but is that something that you're really kind of surprised by or interested in, or how do you view that? Uh, no, it doesn't really matter to me, but I like them in line in the NFL too. I think you could split them out to the slot some, but like in lines where he's at best, and like Noah Fant in the NFL, I want him more in the slot than in line because he's just so big and so athletic. Uh, but Hawkinson. His best fit is in line. Okay, kind of struggled a little bit fighting through the contact, which is kind of interesting. Maybe. Does a nice job washing him down the line there. Kind of looked like he may have gotten away with the hold. Maybe, Maybe a little, but yeah. I like that nice simple wheel out in the right zone. Yeah, he moves. He moves well in space. Comes off the line really well. A lot of blocking snaps. the second time he's fallen over. They seem to have, like, two guys on him all the time. Ooh, that was nice. 
I'm actually going to rewind this and we can talk about this a little bit more specific. Is that where it's supposed to be? I think it was. And yep, okay, good. Get some with the back turned. Nice piece of the angle as well. I like how he was forcing him, as you mentioned earlier, down the line. Yeah, it does a nice job of taking what's there. Ooh, nice out route. Really nice concept too, getting your fans underneath. Singing Busters. Rip needs Stanley though. Oh, they gave it to him. Okay. Nice catch. Three guys right around that much you can do after the catch. Finds a way they did open a lot, though. He's nice at that, especially in the short routes. He's very, very quick off the ball. Does a great job of sealing uh, defenders. See, there's another example right there. Beautiful. H back almost. Nice hands catch. Yep. In line again. Finds a spot, but poor throw. See, there's Hook again. It's very quick off the ball. That's fantastic. Drives him. Keeps his feet square. Yeah, actually, let's go back and real quick slow this one down a little bit and kind of just go back over this and emphasize a couple of things and point out kind of like what we're seeing too. He's under under control in space. It's mirrors the defender there. He's able to get his body square and then uh, just drives him, drives him out. It's a nice play. Yep, and I also like too that as you mentioned, he drives him out. And he kind of helps open that hole for the runner here. I think that's Makai Sargent. He's seen, another thing that's been really impressive so far, too, is the consistency in which he's doing things. It's not like, oh, yeah, he does this on one play. He's done it probably five or ten times. Oh, man. Ooh. Nice block. He's got a little bit of power to him, that's for sure. Here's a replay. Boom. So, one thing that I'm going to point out here is the ability to clear out this gap. So, what you're going to see here is he's obviously, there. the line is apparently shifting left. Probably a zone scheme. And you're going to see Hawkinson here. Just clear out this lane for the runner on the free rusher. Great pickup. And it allows him to make the cutback and take the cutback lane. Very nice. Same thing there. Except it doesn't stay engaged. Block and release. That was uh, a very interesting play. Not necessarily on Hawkinson's part in the design. Nice shot selling the pass protection there. Ooh, nice throw from Stanley. Oh, he missed that. It's a little wild in space to get his feet under him. Nice job just finding a soft spot. Great zone, thank you. Oh, a little bit of cut. Oh, nice 
sell to the outside that you're back in. That was a trash decision. There he is, Denton. They're sealing another guy. Scene Buster. That was a sick catch from fan traffic. Dang. Nice. Like the motor, place through the whistle. Another thing too is that he he seems to be blocking linemen. Have you noticed that? Yeah, they stick him on a lot of ends. Like ninety nine, that's not a linebacker. <laughs> Most of these tight ends, if they block at all, they're on linebackers or DBs. There was a rep rep from the slot there. You don't see it that too often with him. He's got nice zone IQ. He just he finds soft spots really well. So willing to be physical. Another rep from the slot. Finds a spot. Gets the first down. Well, oh, bad spot. But yeah. Nice catch from Fat. That was a nice route combo. Nice power on third and short. Ooh, cup block. Nice cup block. So, going back here, don't really see a ton of these, so I am going to replay this one. That might be a little too far, but oh well. Right play. Just completely takes him down to the ground, wipes this guy out of the play. Very nice. Okay. Really nice, nice body catch. control. Go to awareness of where the stits are at. Third down. Oh, yeah, nice. I didn't even mark that at first. What I like here, that's actually really nice to throw ball by Stanley, too. He placed that away from the defender. But, again, hands catch here from Hawkinson. Brings it in nicely. That's probably the first time we've seen him surely get beat. I don't even know if you would call that game being on a block. Nice. Could have been called for a hold, but... Like the finish. That was a nice spot there. Doesn't give up any ground. Oof. Missed. He can be a little wild in space at times. He just he's a little too aggressive sometimes. More of a phone boother. Yeah, I mean he's I mean he's most of the time he's good in space, but you know, he's just so aggressive sometimes he just won't get under control and he can whiff like that. That's been a common thing uh, with a lot of these tight ends and these uh, some of these other linemen, they struggle in space a lot. 
So, thoughts overall on that game, or did you kind of already go over most of the stuff? Yeah, that was just that was a classic Hawkinson game. Really good blocks, occasional good uh, receptions. That he just, but he's basically a sixth lineman that can give you about five, eight, five to seven catches a game. So, how do you think that that plays into his value? For example, like my team, the Lions, pick top ten. Do you think that getting a sixth lineman at tight end is worthy of a top ten, fifteen pick? Green Bay is another one. Uh, I mean, I really like him. I I don't know if I go all the way with top ten, but like, if you take him top twenty, I have absolutely no issue with it. I mean, he's he's a great blocker and can be used in the receiving game. So he's the best of both worlds at tight end. He's basically all you want as a tight end. So I mean, I have no issues with top fifteen, top twenty ish. I know I know a lot of these guys like Daniel Jeremiah, John Ledlord, they all have them top five, top ten. I mean, I I don't really have a problem with it, but I'm just I can't go that high with them. There's just a lot too much defensive talent for me to put them that high. Interesting. Uh, so next game you said Miss State. Yeah, that's good. Montez Sweat on the other side of this one. No Noah Fant in this game, so we we'll should see a lot more of Hawkinson. Like, maybe, I, I can't remember if he was more in the slot. I think he was because no Fant, but so we should see more of that. Interesting. Uh, one second. <laughs> no, not 144. Uh, let's try 40. There we go. Jeffrey Simmons. Nice little move to the outside to get inside the linebacker. Ooh, took him out. Nice. Scene busters. Oh, that was nice physicality. So physical. He's he's such a good blocker. It's I don't think I've ever uh, like I said I haven't seen a tight end this good at blocking. He will lift though, <laughs> like that. Age back again. He has that versatility to put him in different roles. There is in the slot. You can put them all over. So one minor thing, and this may not seem like a big deal to some other teams, especially teams that have a tight end already, but one thing that I'm just going to point out for selfish reasons is watch how Hawkinson kind of draws the coverage here. You have at least one guy on him, and this guy is probably going to be on him to some degree also. Oh, no, he came all the way across. So either way, you have a guy almost at all times on TJ Hawkinson. He's kind of a threat, even if he's not really a Noah Fant type athlete. You still have to account for him on the field as a receiver. And that's a lot more than some teams have right now. To put it kindly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I remember this play. Goes nowhere. Oh, this was the bowl game, by the way, for those of you guys who didn't catch that. Slot again. Oh, 
here we go, route, and yep, they had the safety over the top, but as you guys saw there, someone on him, which for my Lions, probably three times better than what we had last year. Same thing, drew a double and a free up 84. Touchdown, I'm guessing. This 84, this, this 84 is having a dark game. That showed nice speed from Jonathan Abram right there. But um, this 84 is having a nice game. What a wasted throw from Stanley. Hawkinson does a nice job of that little fake to the outside to get free himself up inside. There was a safety over the top there, so it didn't really work, but he does a nice job of that in the open field. Starts out in line. You can see that little jab to the outside. It gets him going that way and beats him back in. And you can kind of start to see the separation there between him and the, the coverage. And it keeps the safety aligned over, too, which kind of does have an impact on that play. If the safety is able to come across and, and cut off Smith Marset, uh, maybe you don't get that touchdown. Worst case scenario, you get a pick out of it. See, there it does it again. Nice pass protection. That seals the guy again. She's so good at that. Nice anchor. Doesn't get moved. Does a really nice job of maintaining blocks. See, there's the whiff in space it in. He'll do that occasionally. That's the one issue I have with him. He just doesn't kind get it across the, the line. Yeah, it doesn't get across the line quick enough there. Sweat reads it well. That was honestly a pretty good play by Montez. Yeah. Oof. I don't know what that was. Looked like a disguised coverage. Stanley has really struggled this year. If Iowa had a good quarterback, they could have competed for the Big Ten. That was a nice block there. Good job. This is a nice job in space. Drove Abram out. So, speaking of space here, Mary, again, brief note, but something I'm going to go back to is how he gets off the line. I think you've already mentioned this once or twice. But right here, he just slips through both defenders, and it frees him into a ton of space before he meets the coverage. And because he meets the coverage so quickly, it frees up the other receiver for long enough to, to get the throw. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. Same thing there, as I just pointed out, really slipped through the black well. Or the defender. Nice job getting off the, the block there. He almost kind of chipped your. Yeah, chipped him. Combo. Oh, oh, double move. Ooh. Does a great job with the head fates. That's something you don't see most wide receivers in this class run. So, yeah, let's kind of go back to this one real quick. Oops, did not mean to do that. We are just going to start out in slot, and boom. So what this is going to do is this is going to draw the, I'm guessing Mike, maybe the outside linebacker away, uh, and kind of lean him toward this guy. But now this guy forces this defender here into almost a decision of sorts between these two. But then 
both of them come back in, honestly, he probably should have just kept going outside. Uh, but now, since he's coming back in, he has to worry about that zone. Unfortunately, the pressure gets there, but still, very nice. Well, first off, concept. Uh, second off, execution of the route. Oh, man. Oh, nice put by Stanley. Ooh, That's okay. such a good block. Yeah. Very physical at the point of attack. Oh, yeah. And one thing, too, that I was talking about with someone earlier is the technical aspect of this and how he does a really nice job of uh, the, the usual, utilizing the angles and utilizing the leverage and things like that, too. It's not just him pushing guys forward, it's him kind of using the technical aspect of blocking uh, to win reps and not just knock guys over or pancake or whatever. Which is really cool because it shows that you don't necessarily need to refine a lot of those areas. It was really warm for January. Well, it is. It is Tampa, so. And, yep, same thing there. Drew the coverage, of course, it wasn't a great throw, but he at least gets somebody on him to respect him in coverage. Watch this play. Nice contact balance. Very nice Fair. contact balance. Yeah, that's incredible contact balance there. I also, one thing that doesn't really get talked a lot about with these routes is the patience that this kind of requires. Because what you're going to see here is you're going to see him kind of like almost cut this guy off in the quarterback and it really helps the offensive lineman there at least for an extra second or so keep Stanley upright that's on a third down too oh man love it Ooh, another nice play. very nice footwork with the little quick jabs he he's just so clutch at getting open with it Stitch his foot in the ground, does a little head fake, finds, finds a way to get open. Oops, not go back now. Nice. Right there, yep. Nice smooth cut. Nice catch, and then just a little bit of yak on to it. Boom. Oh, replay. Oh, well. Nice recovery by Stanley there, after dropping the snap. Oh, he's done such a nice job of getting off there. Nice drive. Yes, such a good job of being able to reach the net, net to tap over with this great ball get off.
Mm, nice contested catch there by uh, Rose Hawkinson, I think. Cool. So, overall thoughts on that game? Just pretty basic, what you'll see from Hawkinson. Just great blots. And then he showcases more of his receiving ability there without without Fant. So, line him up at inline, H back in the slot. Showed a nice te technique in the route running to be able to find holes and zones. Great zone IQ separates pretty easily. Um, there's not much else, not much else you can want from a tight end than what Hawkinson provides. Cool. So do you want to watch another, or do you want to carry off? Uh, I can watch another if you're up for it. Awesome. So which one, Wisconsin or Penn State? Uh, let's go Wisconsin. Yeah, let's go Wisconsin. So this was actually really early on in the season, it looks like. Uh, fourth game. Interesting. Nice. Short yardage blocking. Of course, they don't get it. Point the line. Okay, doubled up the interior. Jeez, look at all those linemen. Oh my gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys on the line. That's Iowa football. Nice job being able to take the contact and then drive his legs to be able to drive him forward. Do you see where he lined up? Uh, where on that last play? On this one, yeah. He was at the uh, top of the line in a three-point. Or are you talking about this on one the, here? This one. Oh, this one, okay. Um, yeah, he's, he's really out wide. You never see that with him. Yeah, he lines up at X there. Before shifting you, of course, but that's mismatch city on your corner. Yeah, you have to exploit that. Beautiful. Oh, look at the separation. What a sick cut. And that's like a pure DB, too. That's not even a linebacker, I don't necessarily think, unless the motion to linebacker out wide. No, that's a corner. throw away. How did they get a flag? That was really dumb. Nice anchor. There. Oh, beautiful. Nice gap recognition. Again, playing through the whistle. Excellent. Yeah, he does tend to over uh, shoot. I guess is probably the word. Yeah, that's his one. That's the one knock. He's he's not super good in space. He, most of the time, he's good, but he'll have occasional struggles. Power run this right up the gut. Yep. Oh, they didn't get it though. Wow. I guess he didn't give it to the fullback. Ooh, nice. Great block. Just he goes outside, he takes him outside. Very technically sound. Very nice anchor. You don't see him get moved back very often once he gets engaged. Nice catch by guessing that's in there. Hmm. 
Nice. Nice job in space there. He corrected himself very well. Nice second level. At least gained the second level. Didn't really end up mattering. Right here, and it just takes away the mic. Double? Oh, nope. He just couldn't get free from the line. Busters. I'd like to see him against Rashawn Gary. <laughs> I think Hockett Silver won that. I do too. That's why I think it would be interesting to see. Okay. Great and contested catch. So what I'm going to focus on here is a little bit more of the actual receiving receiving uh, traits that I look for in an actual receiver and you're gonna see a couple of things that I really like first off the ball tracking is excellent and part of that is because he gets his head around early right so what you're gonna see is the DB doesn't exactly know when to get the arm up and he overcompensates Going a little bit too early and he takes away that arm which allows Hawkinson's left arm here that he tries to take away can't uh, to get himself a little bit more time because he, the DB is cut off guard with the timing of the throw. Because of that, Hawkinson is able to win a body positioning battle and just completely body out this defensive back. Next is a really nice job with the timing of the hands. Again, it's to not give away anything to the DB. And just, the, oh, that's a fantastic job of, again, just simply winging the body positioning and the body control. Going down to the ground, still able to get, well, not exactly a hands hands catch, but get his hands on the football and secure it. Oh, I guess normal. Okay, for some reason, that's slow. Tons of space for Noah. Run play. Yeah. That was a nice pass rush. It's a nice route too. Comes off the line well. Good job breaking down. David Little had fake down and got back inside. He creates separation really well at the top of his routes. So one thing that you talked about a couple of times already, but just another example of this is his ability here to get down the line in the block. You're going to see him get all the way across. Excellent short area burst, which we saw in his splits. Nice finish. Nice. Nice job washing them down the line there. He does a great job of understanding the play and taking what the defense does. Oh, that was really nice. Separation, easy. Beautiful. So one thing, again, I've already pointed this out a few times, but just another example. Showing that kind of consistency with him. We've seen the same kind of things a few times now. First, he's going to be able to get three, straight through the line. Even though the line is kind of pushing him into that lane, Hawkinson still does a really nice shove getting through that quick with the nice initial first step and burst. And then down the field, 
you see that quick that short area burst again and the ability to separate quickly but also the acceleration when it changes direction and the ability to separate both with the the hands and legs Wide open, or not? Looked like it was for a second at least. Nice second level, or at least getting to the second level. Play action move. Oh no, nope, just straight up sweep. Ooh, nice play by T.J. Edwards. I think that is. Nice. Like that. And that, again, kind of goes back to your thing about him being in space. Uh, you do get to see some positive examples of that as well. It's not all necessarily a big, huge weakness. Right here, he starts off in the slot and then comes back down toward the line to make the block. Anchor. It showed nice agility being able to stay in front of him for most of that rep. And yeah, and one thing that doesn't get really a lot of hype with, with tight ends is pass protection. Uh, most of the time, oh yeah, he was able to open up holes for the run game. Oh yeah, he's a really nice receiver. Oh, you know, he's really athletic. He can move. But TJ, you're kind of getting that third dimension, that third phase of the game with the pass protection. And, I mean, it's not like he's on defensive tackle in this particular instance, but, I mean, it's not exactly like a 200-pound safety. He got Stanley enough time to throw and make his reads. And that's, honestly, a lot better than any other tight end. Oh, nice drive. Great block. Very physical and does a great job driving guys down the field. Nice hitch route. Just finds holes. Ooh, physical. Thirty six. Nice play. Fourth quarter now. Really nice route, just poor throw. That's, yeah, <laughs> that was a very nice route with a horrid throw, uh, to be more descript and rude, I guess, maybe. Uh, but yeah, what I really like here is he's, oh, tons of space. That defender doesn't even bother. There's no one even near him. And the one guy that's closest to him is more than five yards away. Nice job opening the gap. Nice job separating late, using the DP's leverage to get open. Nice job being able to reach the block again. He's so good at that. Stays engaged. Nice cut. Didn't matter, but... won his rep. Someone else did not. Fourth 
pull back. Oh, it was a corner on the blitz. Nice. Slot there. Probably should have came back across, but oh well. Ooh, nice release. I really like his physicality and the way that he's willing to use his hands to win routes as well as his legs. And we'll see this very quickly on early on in this rep. Right there, he kind of just moved. He, really, have you seen DK Metcalf versus Bama? I have. You remember that first play where he kind of just like knocks the guy away and goes for like that deep touchdown? Yep. Like the very first I kind of get like that kind of vibe from that. He yeah, that did look very similar. Bam, get out of my way and went down the field. Of course, they only had help over the top, which is what kept it from being a big play. Uh, whereas Alabama was stupid and didn't. Did he catch that? No, nah, bounced. So, uh, thoughts on the Wisconsin game? Just basically another uh, Hawkinson game, but he sh shows the uh, traits to be a really good route runner and separate, just like he always does. Had a couple big plays in there, and just more good blocking. It's just a very consistent player. You get the same thing every single day. A little bit more of the explosion as well in terms of down the field playmaking, the ability to seam busts, those those vertical routes, uh, those types of things also. So one more thing I want to ask you is, do you think the playing with Fant is his second tight end or the other way around, depending on how you view this situation, do you think that that hurt them? Mm, no, I don't think it hurt them. Interesting. I think... I mean, you mean like hurt like production wise or like draft wise? In terms of how they are utilized, I guess. In terms of um, just the way that they're maybe viewed. If you if you want to count production in that, then that could play. Uh, but more so in terms of like having the surrounding talent is kind of what I'm getting at. And I like, mean, oh, well, he doesn't have to do as much because Fant has the ability to stretch, or Fant doesn't have to do as much in the blocking because Hawkinson can do it for him. I mean, yes and no. Because, like, yeah, Hawkinson was more of, like, the uh, blocker, so Fant didn't have to do it as much. And Fant with the receiving, Hawkinson didn't have to do it as much. So they didn't, they didn't get to showcase their ability to do both as well as some the opportunity of other tight ends to showcase it but they showcase it enough like where it doesn't hurt their draft stock at all I mean, teams see the ability for Hawkinson to block really well and see the potential as a receiver and teams see fans crazy uh, potential as a receiver oh, and some kind of see the blocking ability he needs to improve there so that it probably hurt Fant more than Hawkinson in this case and it obviously hurt production because then that's another tight end to take away from your numbers but like so yes and no but like overall I don't think it really like hurt them much because they're they're still probably going both going first round so so another thing to think about too is do you think that being Probably the biggest threats on their team maybe help or hurt their the way that they're viewing the draft community. Like, because we always talk about, like, with running backs, right? Uh, perfect example of this was Justin Jackson last year and how he had so many touches because Northwestern just grinded it out, like, all the time that kind of, like, well, he's already wearing and tearing. Do you get that kind of vibe from Hawkinson and, and Fant that they're kind of being worn down a little bit because they're used so in this way at Iowa? Or do you think that no. they'll still have that career longevity despite that? I I still think they'll have the career longevity. I don't I don't think that's 
as big of a deal with like with receivers and tight ends as it is running backs. Because with the running backs, the more touches you're getting, the more you're pounding in the guy as you're getting tackled, you're getting landed on, you're getting you're going full speed with the ball in your hand. So I mean, it, it takes more out of the running back than I would say receiver and tight end. Because receiver and tight end, I mean, you get used normal, you get I mean you block and everything, it takes a lot out of you, but like Tight ends, offensive line, they always have long careers because you're not getting constantly like tackled and you're not getting constantly hit like in the head or anything. Like it's it's easier for them to last longer, so like, I don't really see them being used a lot um, as a big deal for this. Cool. Uh, so, is there anything else that you want to add about Hawkinson that we haven't necessarily talked about yet? Any other concerns you may have? Any other positives that we haven't really talked about? Uh, not really. He's just basically everything you want in a tight end. I mean, he's. I mean, I like. I really liked OJ Howard. I don't know if I like him more than. I probably like him more than OJ Howard because o, he's a much better blocker than OJ. But OJ Howard, you know, went. He obviously went number ten. It was number ten. But yeah, number ten. Um, it was number 10, right? I think it was closer to, like, 18. Oh, 18. 18, yeah. Yeah, 18 seems more right. Yeah, I think it was 18. 10 was but Ebron to us. We took Ebron 10, and then... But that was, that was a much earlier, though. 2014, same year as Donald. Yeah, but... Yeah, O.J. Howard was just two years ago, though. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was 18. I mean, I thought he should have gone higher than that. But, like, Hawkinson in that area is perfectly fine with me. I think he'll go in that same sort of area, maybe. He might fall to the later round, later part of the first. But, yeah, I mean, I probably like him more than O.J. Howard. I really liked O.J. Howard. So, I haven't been scouting too long, but Hawkinson's probably the best tight end I've ever scouted. So, I'm a huge fan. Sweet. Uh, so, uh, is that it? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Well, uh, also, uh, thank you for coming on and doing this one with me, Carson. Appreciate it. Uh, no also, problem. again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, thing, the video, props to Mark Jarvis for coming out with the database. And also, I haven't mentioned this yet. I forgot to. Uh, but TJ Hawkinson is a full QIB qualifier for those of you guys who are Lions fans tuning in. So this will actually be featured as a part of that series as well. Uh, props to Eric Schlitt for doing all of that stuff for us in the Lions community. Uh, as well as, of course, Kent LaPlatt, who does all of the RAS work uh, at MathBomb on Twitter. Uh, if you guys follow us on Twitter, at ProCentral101, uh, the links to their Twitter accounts are all there. So definitely go ahead and give them a follow as well. Uh, they're a big help to me and some of us in the admin group at LDT and, and Prospect Central uh, use a lot of their stuff. So definitely uh, go ahead and drop them a follow as well as, of course, us. And like and subscribe to our channel uh, here at YouTube. Uh, and hopefully you guys check out some of the other videos that we've done. Carson doesn't really do too many of these, but I did a couple with Brain and Keelan's on here sometimes too. Uh, so don't forget to check out some of their stuff as well. Carson, do you have anything you want to plug individually? Uh, no, I'm good. Sweet. Well, uh, thank you guys all for tuning into this one. But for now, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out.